Welcome back to Stunt Club Soda for another exciting episode of Worst Episode. Alright, where do I start with this? What's relevant these days? I think kids are in. Children are always in vogue. And if my memory of an old Google search stands, there's some type of Rugrats reboot right around the date to be determined corner. Hopefully that upcoming announcement will give this video some traffic, so that's really all I need to justify this and get it underway. Let's figure out the worst episode of Rugrats. Okay, there are a lot of episodes of Rugrats, like a considerable amount, a considerable 172 episodes, so I've elected to break the whole show up into two different segments of Worst Episode. This first part will include all the episodes before Little Baby Dilly was born. It was all so simple back then. These were the golden years of Rugrats when it was still a poignant exercise in childlike misunderstanding. It stuck to some simple and relatable themes, but for the most part, it was a depiction of both sides of child rearing. I think this is what made it stand out. There was a little something for everyone, and that's why there's so many iterations of the Rugrats property. But this was another one of those shows that my parents were a bit cautious in letting me watch when I was still running around in diapers, or so I've heard. I imagine they didn't want me speaking nonsense words for the most part, because these toddlers do not have a firm grasp of the English language. But that didn't stop me from eventually getting a bunch of episodes on VHS. You know what I'm talking about, those Nickelodeon orange tapes with like three or four episodes on them. It was a great feeling watching back and seeing episodes I hadn't seen since I owned a VCR. I actually remembered a lot more than I thought I would, and I attribute that to the quality of Rugrats. It's not a perfect show, but it is memorable and iconic for reasons. Those reasons being the storytelling, character development, artistic choices, music, oh my God, every sound in the show feels completely deliberate and a perfect match for the environment. Even without knowing for sure, I'd still say a lot of love went into making Rugrats special and the best that it could be. So while I'm busy stroking my beloved Rugrats, let's speed through some highlights before we get down to the real reason we're here. I want to start with The Box. It's a simple episode about simplicity. While Stu wants to make the greatest, most complicated toy, he fails to see and understand the merit of simple tools and possessions. In this case, a cardboard box. This box makes its way around the whole block, with each baby getting a chance to bond with it and go on their own make-believe adventures. It's one of those episodes with the babies doing baby shit and really only taking things in and experiencing for the whole episode. The visuals complete the story without much needing to be said, and it's wrapped up with a heartfelt moment of realization and clarity. Without the little bit of a dog conflict, this episode could work with no dialogue and still convey its point. I think that's pretty cool. Another solid Rugrats episode is The First Cut. As the title indicates, Tommy gets into an accident with a dangerous bramble bush while saving a baby bird from imminent doom. After seeing his life nectar drip from his body, he developed a new fear for pretty much everything. This was the opposite of what we had come to know about Tommy and his friends weren't blind to this change either. It wasn't until Chucky had also found himself in peril that Tommy learned once again to be brave and put his fear behind him. It's mostly doubling down on established traits for a toddler who's barely a character at all really, with such little life experience. But it's still a useful lesson in the end. All Rugrats episodes don't need lessons, though. In fact, one of my favorite episodes is pretty devoid of a life lesson. The Legend of Satchmo is an episode about camping with toddlers in the backyard, something I have not experienced. It's not at all relatable to me, but I still enjoy watching it because it's great to look at. It's funny and the palette and visuals really sell the dark and scary backyard aesthetic they were going for. Let's forget that the terrain really doesn't match up at all to what we know Stu and Dee Dee's yard looks like and focus more on the fact that the characters are, yes, toddlers, and everything bigger than them that they don't recognize or understand is probably going to scare them. There aren't many episodes with particularly divergent visual themes, but the handful that take the plunge are strong standouts. Rugrats, at least in the earlier seasons, didn't really vary the formula much. There are only a couple different types of Rugrats episodes. There's the typical baby adventure where the kids sometimes put their lives in danger, as babies do, or scare the shit out of their parents, which are not mutually exclusive, mind you. There's the imagination adventure that's a visual spectacle of the babies acting out something they saw or exploring something. It's pretty much make-believe for 15 minutes. Then there's the life lesson episodes, which I've touched on already. And to shake things up, you have the Angelica episodes of Angelica being Angelica. Thinking she knows how the world works, being mean, or trying to manipulate others. They're the ones where the babies misconstrue something and Angelica lies to them for no reason. They're the ones where she lies to them, and in some cases the adults, but to get something she wants. 
no, but occasionally she's not the bad guy and actually gets to connect and have real moments. This leads into a theory of mine. The gist of it is that the majority of the show actually takes place within Angelica's head. She's the linchpin for a lot of episodes. She gets to be the catalyst because she can talk and communicate with adults. And this well of attainable information is what makes her fun and interesting. Because we don't know what she's going to do with it. Because she's older and I guess more worldly, she can pick and choose what she reveals and clarifies for the babies because this three year old can talk to babies. She can have full conversations with goo goo ga ga and babies. I don't buy it. Because never does she ever act as a conduit of communication between baby and adult. It's probably never been in her interest to translate for them, but I'm still calling bullshit. She's schizophrenic or something. All right, now that I've uh, called a child schizophrenic and got my ramblings out of the way, it's time for the worst episode. And yes, it is an Angelica episode. The worst episode of Rugrats, part one, is Pickles vs. Pickles. For those of you who don't remember, this is the one where Angelica refuses to eat broccoli and decides to sue her parents for trying to make her. It's not fair that the grown-ups get to decide everything and she has to make good on her threat of they'll be sorry. She hires the prosecutor she saw on TV and when her parents reject the settlement, the case goes to court. She milks all of the sympathy she can with the sweet little girl act and even benefits from defending herself after firing her lawyer halfway through the trial. In the end, without a second of deliberation, the jury awards Angelica all of her demands, including possession of the house and control of her parents' assets. Too bad it's all part of Drew's nightmare. Soaked in sweat, he rushes up to Angelica's bedroom and out of fear, I think, apologizes to his daughter and tells her she doesn't have to eat broccoli if she doesn't want to. Based on the food chart and red marker she keeps on her bed, this is not the first time she's vaguely threatened her father to do exactly what she wants him to. Great lesson, guys. Despite 90% of this episode being part of a dream sequence, it doesn't amount to anything the least bit aspirational. Angelica's a monster from beginning to end, but it's not her, so it doesn't really matter. I don't know what to make of this. Who is this for? Probably for parents that are spoiling their children rotten, right? Is it telling me to be strict but also flexible at times when raising my bratty daughter? All I know is that Charlotte should have shut that shit down immediately with her being a no-nonsense career woman. This episode doesn't make sense and it shouldn't have to, but based on its neighboring episodes and other superior peers, it falls very short of the mark for a good Rugrats episode. I think it's too different. What do you think? Am I being too harsh with Pickles vs. Pickles? I'll admit that I sort of forgot this episode existed, but immediately jotted it down as contender for worse before I finished the rest of the first five seasons. It's not a great sign when an episode jumps out like that. I thought I'd have to decide between something in season four or five because, as we all know, Kino shows tend to dip in their later seasons when they approach double digits, you know. But those were the episodes I'd seen more recently, actually. Those are the ones I had on VHS mostly. It's, it's a very clear part of my childhood that I can recall watching episodes like Grandpa's Bad Bug and Autumn Leaves. That's a sign of a powerful show when it can send you crashing back through the hazy memories in an instant. I appreciate the experience I get from evoking the feelings of watching old shit, and I appreciate you watching. Gear up for part two because I think Dee Dee's expecting another baby boy. Come back for the next worst episode as I finish the last four seasons of Rugrats. And in the meantime, let us know down in the comments what your best and worst of Rugrats are. I'm probably wrong, so let me know. But most importantly, if you like the video, then like it. And subscribe to Stunkle Up Soda while you're at it, and keep coming back for our uploads.